we are we are it's it's basically by car. I mean, it's for a car for parking for, and we all pay a lot of money for car registration and car taxes, and you know, at least my thought coming into the meeting was was consistent with with this. That a couple reasons. One is that it does show that that you're not just hiding or or trying to avoid taxes on the car. Um, but also it would be very difficult for the office to sort of decipher what's what's valid and what isn't looking through different you know legal documents and trying to trace back the ownership so you know even if it was like say I'm a resident but I have a car but it's not registered here um, I, I didn't feel like that would be very fair to me wouldn't be easy to administer but I think also you might have said that there could be multiple people who are part of the right. trust. Right. So it could be you know, three people, it could be ten people. Yeah. yeah. So then, therefore, all ten would be eligible for. You know, That's why I'm talking about it. Yeah. Mm, right. Or I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, could it be limited to like one or two people? Or I just feel like the, the issue is that people are saying, "Well, I I pay." Taxes, property taxes here, so but I they don't be pay car tax. They that's don't. They true. aren't paying car property taxes. Yeah. They're paying real estate taxes for their home, but right. they're not paying car taxes. Right, but I mean, I can understand the argument there. You know what I mean? We do have uh, something called a B sticker. Um, which is $75. It gives people access to the beaches and the marinas, and it's for residential property taxpayers with out-of-town registration. And so, for example, if like a snowbird were to like live in Florida or somewhere else for a portion of the year and want to like spend their summers here, um, if they wanted to keep their car registered in Florida or the other state, we do have a discounted sticker that's for them specifically, again, for like a residential property taxpayer with out-of-state out of registration. And that's not an LLC or a trust or that's a correct. Registration. Okay, I got it. Um, I think the reason most people do put, you know, their homes into the trust or the LLC is for the benefit of their children, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's what we do. Liability. Yeah. Also shared ownership. Yeah. Liability, but also... There can be many people owning a house. Right. Right as part of a. a yeah. But I didn't realize we had a. So you. Mm -hmm. So if 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 a resident mm -hmm. has a car that's registered in Vermont, mm -hmm. and avoids taxes, but they still can buy a discounted ticket. Yes. Yeah. they just have to prove that they're that they have a resident? Mm -hmm. Here and are paying real estate taxes. So to your point, they it, it's not they're not denied completely if they're just registering their car out of state. Yeah. If they prove that they have a residence and they're paying real estate taxes, they could have their their car registered out of state and and still get a seventy five dollar. Mm -hmm. What's the number of B stickers? Do you know that off? Like how many you issue? It's a it's a small amount and it may be if it's a couple hundred, but it's not it's not substantial. And of them I think it could also be town employees, non residents. Yep. Um, okay. Veterans as well. Yep. So I would be talking about smaller, smaller numbers that would be the people who cars are registered out of state out of Fairfield. Yep. I don't know, I just feel like it's really hard to decipher ownership in LLCs and trusts and there's if you if you can't come forward and say here's my ad, here's my tax receipt for my house people's names aren't on LLCs most of the time mm -hmm. it's some um, how do you how do you decipher who the real ownership is and is it are they just one of many owners I'd be more inclined if we could, if it was like one for one, a family has has their house in a trust, and and there can be an easy proof that 
that's for our family, period. It's just a way to to account for the ownership. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to handle that. If that's easy to do. You know, for some of Probably a lot more desk. work for Park and Rec. Yeah. Yeah. For fifty dollar difference, <coughs> they have to do all the research and spend the time. Right. What's yeah. this the price tag on the higher one? <laughs> The, yeah, so 250 is the J sticker, and it's for any vehicle that doesn't pay taxes to the town of Fairfield, okay. um, and that gets you into Jennings and Penfield Beach. Got it. No, but they couldn't get the $75 if they're on in a, if their house is owned by an LLC. Right, correct. Right. So but that if that you were thinking like, maybe yeah. that is the case, they'd have to buy the more expensive one. And that's the same as any non-resident. That's correct. I don't, I don't see any reason why we should be changing the status quo. Yeah. I'm glad to hear there's that $75. I didn't realize we had that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good accommodation yeah. for someone who, who is a taxpayer, is paying real estate tax, but just registers their card right elsewhere. Right. I think the question and concern is someone who doesn't trust people, right? Yeah. So they want the 250 and they want to even pay the 75 or more. I think that's right. Yeah. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. The, it, and it was one person that had come here with like two binders of information at like 428 on a Friday. I, mm -hmm. I think she sent this email on Wednesday, June 19th. But, so I think she had come the Friday before. Um, but so her vehicle is registered in Florida, her home is here in Fairfield and it's held in the LLC, and she was informed that properties held in LLCs or trusts can only purchase the out-of-town out of stickers at 250 So she said that she, you know, pays a lot of money in taxes and didn't understand. And, you know, for our office, the way that beach stickers are sold, they're sold to the cars, they're sold to the vehicles. We add the cars as members of the household, like it's, it's a very formal membership process. Um, from our end. I know she had sent, I think, an email into the Parks and Rec Commission, and that's why it was yeah. came here. Mm -hmm. But she didn't have the documents to satisfy the requirements that the department has? No. All right. She, yeah. she so didn't have, have a real estate tax receipt. She couldn't do yeah. that. But her vehicle is registered in that. Florida. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's, it's the reality we can't account for everybody. Yeah, I think that we're all in agreement. It's okay. I mean, exactly what you just said. Someone walked in with binders. Yeah. And would expect someone selling a beat sticker to be able to right look at yeah. these binders and decipher who their true ownership is. Yeah. It's That's tough. Yeah. I don't think we can be set up for that. Yeah. Um. Are any more discussion here? Any public comment? Yeah. Okay, so we can move forward without making recommendations to the commission on that. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Moving on. Um, let's discuss the option of parking passes during bonfire reservations for out of town guests. So, just to provide just some basic information, um, so bonfires run May 1st through September 30th. Um, there's two locations at Jennings Beach. Um, and the permit fee is $100, and it gives um, the permittee the, the permit to burn. Um, this is a budgeted line item. Um, it counts towards facility rentals, and it generates about $27,000 worth of revenue um, for the department. Um, as you know, beat stickers are required the Saturday of Memorial Weekend through Labor Day Monday. Um, you know, and so we were kind of talking through this concern in the office here. Um, you know, we do have pre-existing rules in place to address non-residents. It's not that they're not welcome. They would just have to buy either a daily pass or a season pass. Or if you purchased um, any of the bonfires from May 1st up until the Friday of Memorial Weekend or from the Tuesday after Labor Day to September 30th, there are dates where your non-residents can come to the beach and not have to worry about um, buying a parking pass. There is also, you know, anyone can walk onto our beaches. It's just the parking um, where there's the rules. And so if you weren't able to carpool or Uber, 
um, again, people can still walk onto the beaches, any resident or non-resident alike. What time are the bonfires for? Again, May 1st to September 30th, and they're 5.30 to 10.30. Part of what we're trying to manage is mm -hmm. people in the parking lot taking up parking spots during the summer time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but it's at night. Yeah. 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 But if it was Sasco, I'd worry. But these are. Oh, yeah, Professor these, are the, these aren't the no. fun settings. Right. Right. You can do a late Mohegan, too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't, can't get a late Mohegan? No. Yeah. But yeah. it's not a survival for Yeah. No, we only do it at Lake Mohegan Thursdays through Sundays. We don't do Monday through Wednesday. I feel like this is something that I could get behind a, a slight change or a modification because of the timing and because I feel like it would generate some revenue for Parks and Rec because we all know like when the bonfire thing goes live, they're gone. Yeah. And it's going to be every single night for the whole summer, the season. Yeah, there's 152 days, and so it's roughly 300 bonfires. 300 yeah. bonfires, mm -hmm. okay. Wow. And is there an average amount of attendees, or is it like all over the place? It's all over the place. Okay, yep. So could you administer something where there was an optional add-on at a $10 per sticker or $5? Could you, could, do you think the office is that an option where we said you can either get your your bonfire as it is today for your what for your hundred dollars is that what mm -hmm. it is now, or there's an optional add-on that we would give you ten parking right, 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 yeah. passes yeah. for another hundred dollars we would give you ten parking passes that you could distribute to your if you wanted as optional yeah something or even less five dollars I don't really care what but it, it, it should be something. Yeah, I think even just thinking if we did two passes per bonfire, it would be like 600 passes for the office to process and just in terms of what does that look like and how do you prevent them from being replicated. Right. It just it, It's no, such a busy time of year already. I can't imagine it, it seems difficult for the front desk team to facilitate. What if there was an expiration date on them? It could be only used on the same day as your bonfire. So creating 3,000 time-stamped passes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we're exploring. It's like <laughs> you have sort of pre-printed. When somebody asks for it, then part of them picking it up is you have a form that you just type in the the date, and it prints out their, their they, stickers. They have something they show. And let them cut right, it They up. have a permit? Yeah, there's a permit to burn. Yeah, and usually a fire marshal will come in and check it. So maybe at the bottom of the permit, like you know, this is a half by eleven sheet of paper. Maybe it's designed at the bottom it has two passes that they could cut off and then give out. I feel like time. those could be copied and mass distributed. And so if you have something like I'm just going to say Fairfield Moms or City Coast or like an entity that's having a bonfire where they're inviting um, residents and non-residents alike. I feel like those could be like mass replicated and distributed. People that's collecting them at the booth would say, well, hold on, we have, there's only four a night. How come I have 14 or I'm getting 10, you know what I mean? There's a way to do it. it I mean, yeah. it's just, I don't know if our software, if our program that we're, we're set up has the ability to do it, but there is a way to generate a unique code. You know, you have to have a scanner at the, at the guardhouse to, you know, make sure everybody is unique. But, I mean, that's how they do it in, you know, concert venues and sports venues. So there, there is a way to do it. I just, I don't know that we're set up to do it. Yeah. Personally. I, if I, I we, could be wrong probably with that. our current capabilities, you need, you need some kind of interaction at the booth, right? They would right. have to, they would have to tally up. Yeah, they have to know. That and they couldn't just, like, go up to the, the booth and say, like, I'm here for the bonfire, I'm out of town, and buy the, like, $10 pass for it, okay? So they could technically just be going out to the beach, I understand that. Yeah, I feel like then any anyone could then do that. True, but again, it comes down, I feel like it comes down to the time of day, more so than, like, people trying to get onto the beach for $10, you know what I mean? 
I don't know. Thank you. So a lot of day passes after 5.30 at night? No, we don't. Um, and I could try to pull a report to isolate daily parking sales in that later time of day. It's just, it's, it's sunny out. It's nice out until yeah. Yeah. well after like 8 o'clock. So people will come after work, whether they're coming for picnic or swimming or bonfires. Yeah. But again, and the beach sticker revenue is a budgeted line item. Yeah. So what are, what are the options if you can't really park on the streets and you're there? No. Right. You have to have a permit. Can't park at Sherman, right? I don't see why you couldn't. In the yeah. They do. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. I don't think you can park at I don't know if they actually tell us even signs, so I told you not. Yeah. I've yeah. seen people park at Town Hall and walk yeah. um, Bob's the first, restoration. The church across from Town Hall. First church. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, what if we even went with something simple as given that we can't really put together a big system to do this instead, each bonfire comes with eight and just ask, just have the guard check tally them up. Somebody comes in and says, I'm for this, and when the eight, eight are done, they're done. Um, I take names, and yeah, if it got abused, then you know, we might have to rethink it, but at least there's something out there where I mean, you're going to end up having to I just hate to, not, to think we can't do anything. Yeah, I know. I feel like, boy, at some point we have to almost I have know. some trust in the world, and if it doesn't work, then we just say, okay, we have to stop it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not working, but. Mm -hmm. no. I know. I, I like the option of the hour for an extra hundred dollars you can get. Yeah. Five yeah. yeah. And if we can figure out. Just buy them on that card, however many you need. They're 20 bucks each. That's what I was thinking on the website, right? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. If there were like passes on the website, but they're only for the one fire. So like you try to use it at another time and they're like, oh, it's like not like it's super from five thirty on or whatever, you know. So the system would have to say, I want to buy a bonfire visitor pass bonfire for bonfire. July fifth. They would buy it and it would it would give them. It's just what would prevent people from buying the discounted bonfire passes every day. Every like day? if I had if I had the option right. of buying. A fifty dollar pass on a Saturday versus saying I'm here for the bonfire and get like the twenty five yeah. dollar one. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would want to get the discounted one. Could you just give the ability to do that to the person who purchases the bonfire? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Permit. It like opens up a little. Let them buy their passes and if mm -hmm. and have the guard have the guard collect them. And if he sees something like we got thirty of these, they must have been copied. Then that person doesn't get a uh, bonfire next year because they abuse the system. But if there's a reasonable number, I mean, in any event, you're going to need some interaction with the guard shack. Like they're going to have to, they're going to have to check a ticket, or and you know, we can put it on their phones, but that gets audited, gets a lot of automation. But well, currently. You buy an out-of-state pass, right? Mm -hmm. You put, just put something on your windshield? Yes, it's a, a perforated ticket. Um, the Parks and Rec parking attendant keeps the stub, and then the perforated part goes in the windshield. Um, it's credit card only, um, $40 weekdays, $50 holidays, and weekends. So they buy it online? They buy it in person. On person. Both at Penfield Beach and Jennings Beach. So at the gate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see why we can't. You know, if I'm thinking about the user experience and I just bought a bonfire for 100 I want five passes of 20 bucks. There's another $100, $200. And then I get something emailed to me that I distribute to my guests and they put it on their windshield. Right. Or you get one of those tickets. How do you, when somebody buys and an, an, like a non-resident, how do you get them to pass the email to them? No, they or buy they it at the gate. 
and it's a perforated ticket. The Parks and Rec keeps okay. the stub, and they get the perforated part in their windshield. Could we do the same type of idea, just with different color? Or you're saying, okay, I get it. You're it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter at the car. By the time. But it has to interface with the purchase of yeah. the bonfire. Right? So it, you can't take their current system and dovetail that with the with no, but all you, if I'm working in the guard shack, all you have to do is tell me there's two bonfires today and bonfire A has 10 people and bonfire B has 8 people. Uh -huh. When they show up, charge them $10 and hand them one of the non-resident stickers, whatever, who cares? They stick it in there, it doesn't matter, right? It, they have to get past the gate. I think it's easier for me as the driver to come with something that in my windshield the, the attendant knows to look for that, and then I go in and park. Right, but that's a change to. I'm saying you could do, you could do what they do today already, just by telling the person in the security guard in the guard check who's already taken their money. You're here for this bonfire gets ten. This bonfire gets eight. Those when people come up and they identify themselves, sell them at ten dollars. Sell them a normal non-resident sticker. Who cares that they didn't pay the normal price for it? Yeah. Stick it in their window, and when they get when they hit ten, it's done. done. So I think Galen was just saying like, what would prevent somebody from coming in every single night and doing that? Yeah, hey, I'm here for the bonfire. Yeah, right. right. Before it gets out, that's why it yeah. needs to be generated at yeah. your point of sale. So the person who's yeah. pulling the permit is the one who's responsible for handing them out. <clears throat> well, right. Also, I, I would if the names. Would, I wouldn't feel that confident that the person, you know, like if that I think is above and beyond what they're paid to do, mm -hmm. having to remember, you know, to keep That's track okay. of that, yeah. I, I, just, I wouldn't have any faith that that would go well. I, I mean, so I think we could do a, like a guest list and say, I bought 10, they collect the names here as part of the pass, and you send an email to the I mean, you have to communicate with the guards, right? Another idea I have with license plates. Communicate license plate numbers of each guest coming to the person in the guard shack. They can see the license plate as the person comes and they're crossed off the list. There's no cheating guesses. Three. I mean, I can double check the amount of states from just from Memorial Day, um, Saturday to Labor Day, but it's like we had 400 bonfires times yeah. the 10 license plates. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually. None of this stuff is hard. It's just in, it actually coming to fruition and being yeah. rolled out. Right. I think license plates would be. I think if anything would be give it to the person with the permit and like to distribute it as opposed to trying to have cards. Remember, because you, most of our young uh, young people. Yeah. And I'm you sure know, there's some they're on their iPhone. There. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. You know. You know, like you know, I don't think I don't think here it is. Here's your ten. And if there's a way to put them numbers, and then you know that end of the day they collect them up with the receipts or whatever, and they're like, wait a minute, there's there's 40 here, you know, and I only had 10, and you know who they belong to, and you're like, sorry, you're done, get you pulled out, you know, you're suspended. But I don't, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to cheat. Can you, are you, uh, Galen, able to look to see if the current point of sale system we have can accommodate something like that, where it could kick out? Well, number one, it could give somebody the option to add parking passes to their car. We could probably do something like that. Like okay. For example, we had a spring fling dance and we had add-ons for like corsages and boutonnieres. Mm -hmm. So there, the system does have that module, just what that printed out to look like and how to prevent it from being mass replicated, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so it definitely can, the point of sale system can be modified. Yeah. Can you, uh, will you check to see if it can also kick out a unique sort of uh, ticket for for the parking passes? So we've used um, rec track for like serialized tickets for like the comedy nights or concerts oh, okay. at Penfield Pavilion. So that's the ticket module. So it's slightly different, but I know that it's capable of having a certain number um, of, I'll just say, tickets or availability, like a limited number, and yeah. like uh, selling things in like a serial number. So I know that that's possible. Yeah. Okay. I, 
I mean, that to me sounds like a, a, a reasonable way to do it. Yeah. And here's my other idea. Like, what if we piloted this idea, like, on, like, one or two events to see how it worked out based on your knowledge of, like, who is probably bringing in the most out-of-town people? And we see, like, okay, how smooth does it, does this go? And this is, like, the way to do this. Because I think that if we did it right, I think it would bring in a decent amount of revenue. And I think people would be way more inclined to just come and pay the $10 an out of town. I think it would be taking away revenue. Because I think that right now non-residents are buying 40 or $50 you think so? passes. They are. You don't think they're just parking and coming down? We have Walking. people declining our invites to come because of That's what I'm saying. I feel like there's away. probably a mix between the, two, the, the people who are like, $40 is nothing to me, or like, are you kidding me? I'm not saying 40 bucks. Is but also, we've, we've had guests with our bonfires, too, come in the past, and some of them are turned away at the window, yep. and then other people are just allowed to go in. So, why, so why is the inconsistency? Now? And they're all out of town? Correct. Correct. Some just waved on and others yep. told some are waved in, and, and then there's others that are like, nope, you can't come in, and they're kind of administered. Yeah. 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 So, like right. you said, kids turn over at the gate. Lots of reasons. Well, that it is. Have. It's a lot of young people, but yeah. I mean, usually at night, though, there's usually like a police like officer, a special, or yeah, the dispatcher. Right. But people are, you know, turned away and saying, "Oh, you can't come in," and then people are like, "Why are we going to come if we have to pay?" Yeah. So, um, if you printed out on, so you have the ability to print beach stickers now, on right that people put on their windshield. And what if we printed? So let's say they want ten and they buy ten. You print ten beach stickers, and you hand those to them. And then when they go through past the guard, the guard collects them and keeps them, and that's their pass to to get in. They can't be duplicated any more than a normal beat sticker, right? People don't probably don't duplicate beat stickers now. And the guard picks them up. That's their ticket to get in for their parking. And you have that ability to print beat stickers now, unless that paper stock is so expensive that but we could charge whatever. We could charge even a twenty dollars or saving money. But if you if you did some so I'm just trying to figure out a, a system solution that takes a that use what we have today. Yeah. And I think by we get rid of the whole issue risk of reusing if they just collect them as they come in and they're just one time, they're not really even date stamp, they're just this is just uh, if somebody bought a non president discounted mm -hmm. I mean you can put the you can set a license plate here with a date on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just have the person at the at the guard check collect them. So I'm just trying to think of what could we do. Throw another we're, not gonna, we're, we're not going to do a phone thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's whatever. Whatever. What about the, the person who signs up? Was it was in March. Mm -hmm. So you sign up in March, and they said they want, you know, five. And then all of a sudden they call, and they're in August, and they call back, and they say, "Well, I need five more." Now the system has to be able to add five more. You know, I mean, like it's not by, you know, so it, 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 I don't know if it gets complicated for what the system can do or not. I mean, if it's good, they just go on it like a cart, order five, it goes into the cart and you know, can add five more. I think it's as simple as that. If someone wants to order more later on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it just That's depends on how it was built. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and just in reference to what the Hershorns mentioned before, I. I couldn't be positive of the time yeah. that your guests arrive, but I know that the special police do come on, um, and they're they're solo after eight o'clock, and so they don't have the capability to sell um, passes. You know, they're only looking for people who have the season passes. You know, in their in their windshield, and they're getting getting waved in, but they don't have the ability to sell. Which, which is which is why I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dale. Which no. is why I think we, you know, should be looking for some sort of system that prevents that situation. And it's 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 out there. All of us, you know, uh, have used Spot Hero to find parking, and you know, nobody duplicates those because they have unique codes. You know, and there's an app that we can give the guard house that they scan every ticket that comes in. I, I, 
we have the ability to do this, I, I believe, with what we currently, the current system that we have. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have a, you can have a window, I feel like, you know, so when the special is by himself after 8 p.m. and they have other duties to attend to, like that could be like the cutoff or whatever, you know? And there could be a, a like, if you're coming to the Bonte, you have to be there by like seven or whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just worry, you know, for the people that are attending um, events at like Jackie Drill in Penfield mm -hmm. um, that are non-residents or from out of town or don't have beach stickers, you know, and we've created like a special event pass um, that's just copied on a sheet of paper, cut into fours, and then they're handed out to people that are attending events. And we've seen, we've found those passes at Jennings Beach, at Sasco Beach, um, and so that's like our own internal yeah. checks and balances, yeah. like where's the, you know, managerial oversight. But right. I just, I worry about um, a past that can be easily replicated. I yeah, think, but anyway, that think about, I mean, you can, you can buy parking right now, right? You can, for a garage in Queens, you're going to the airport. It, and if it's not on your phone, you can print it out so that when you get there, they scan it, they know Dylan has a reservation. At, at this time, mm -hmm. same thing would apply here. You know, we you scan the, the car. This is a legitimate out of state, out of town parker mm -hmm. that is going to park here. And then it expires. But then you have to have scanners yeah. in the guard shack. No, you can have the phone. It's just an app. The personal phone. Yeah, they all have the app. Yeah. 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 I mean, what are they doing right now to to, to check? The, you know, cars. They're Looking at the sticker. Some of them, I'm hearing, have the ability to do a transaction, right? The special police don't have the ability to do that, right? So there's some level of accountability that there has to be, I, you know. Yeah. And checking people in is one of those things, you know. I, I pretty simple. I think it's pretty simple. Yeah. I just think <laughs> if you want to do something quick, it can't include generating scannable things on phones that now you have to have whoever's in the guard shack have an app, have a device, and be trained on how to use that. Well, it if should, you it want should, to it right should live in, in, the, yeah. in the shack. Yeah, I'm just thinking that. Right? Like, like so it's time to get modern, yeah. right? Like, because if we're doing manual transactions, it's time to join 2024. <laughs> and, and, like, everywhere you go these days, you show them a code, they scan it, you get in. Yeah. And I know, I'm an IT guy all my life. It might but if you want to get it done, for it because in now where people could just go online months, and it shouldn't book the reservation for that day. So, that's you know what I mean? Like, I think we'll take some of the pressure off the people that are scanning credit cards yeah. as well. They can just I just wanted to see if there's some you know, way so we could do another option, option maybe. maybe. Yeah. As you were saying, yeah. pilot it. Or so how do you yeah. differentiate that bonfire to a regular? We have been, as a department, looking into parking solutions to remove the human element completely. Um, so whether it's modeling a system like they have at the train station, so whether there's kiosks, whether there's apps, whether it's pay by the hour, pay by the day. Um, so we have been looking into these um, solutions. It's just, it affects many different oh, moving yeah. parts including like the solid waste transfer station and the marina and so and not we're just do something special just for Yeah the and so we we have been looking into technology time. I feel like even when we've looked into kiosks a year later we're like we could never use kiosks they fall apart they're terrible you know mm -hmm. to maintain it has to be at base and how do you handle the person that doesn't have a smartphone and um or like an older demographic that doesn't want to like download an app to their phone so we've been looking low key into some parking options to bring us, you know, up to the current current technology. Um, but yeah, the beach stickers and the attendance at the gate and the credit card only, it, it is like an antiquated process. If it was me and we wanted to do this soon, I would offer to whoever the permit buyer is, if you want to come into the office, you can buy 10 passes for your 10 people, you pay for them, we will hand you 10 pre-printed one-time use stickers that you can hand manually to anyone who's coming, and when they drive through, they're collected, and they can't be used again. They're collected and destroyed. 
and maybe they that you a, could do tomorrow. And then maybe they raise the license. And while you're time. looking at your parking solutions, with you won't have for two years, right? It, I just don't want to get that into critical path. But if we wanted to do something like that, it's manual. It includes something you can pr you could print them on your beach on your beach pass, so they can't be duplicated. And when they go through and they're used, they're collected at the station and they're destroyed and never to be used again. Yeah, I think there would still have to be something that lives in the windshield so that um, the police officers going through don't ticket those cars, so they would have to be um, identifiable yeah. in some way. Yeah, yeah that's why I said maybe you can write the license plate on the back. So if they're going around and see a car without one, they just reference that 10 or 20 passes. Yeah, I was trying to get away from having a uniquely identifier of the Bible, right? I mean, we're not going to solve the process part here. I think we all, I think we all would like to do something like this. It makes sense. We're not going to wait until you have a. We want to do something before you have a parking solution for everything for covering, which is going to take you years to do to change. But you still probably just give a ticket to you. For free. You got yeah. it kind of takes one the matching number and the other one goes on the dashboard. And that, that way it solves yeah. that problem. Yeah. You yeah. It. And Whatever you it is, you have to collect the part that lets you get in, and then you leave them the part that allows the car to be sitting there. So, what would prevent the office from doing what they do for Jackie and Penfield? Just what you said? Could you find them at other places? Yeah, and then also, I mean, <clears throat> could you color code them by month? Could we absolutely could? Yeah, it's, um, I'm just just trying to think of how how the process would go um, from from the uh, administrative end. Mm -hmm. And then if there's a you know a rain out and you know like refunds, how would that work? Or um, I've seen on Moms of Fairfield people buy their bonfires and they're trying to swap them out mm -hmm. for a different night because this night won't work. Or like I'm just I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think about administrating the like no refund. Yeah, and then so I think I did a quick check. It's 98 days from Memorial Day Saturday to Labor Day Monday, and so multiplying out times 10 passes, just times two locations. It's just it it. It will take extra time yeah. on the team during an already just busy time of year. I get it. Can and you I, look into the software option? I, I, I think I think that's an easier implementation than everyone thinks. You know, you're really just you're adding a couple line items on the on the uh, point of sale page, right? Yep. It's like it's kicking out unique codes. Then you have to, there's some process change there because you need to make the guards aware that now there are people that have prepaid uh, non-resident passes. I, I just I think that's a pretty easy implementation from an IT standpoint. I could be wrong, but I I think that's fairly straightforward. Well, the good news is time. And yeah. And look in the options. We want to hear from the public if they have any other ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a couple of quick points. We do need to run, but uh, we, sorry, uh, yeah. You know, a few quick points. Um, what we're talking about here was mentioned at the meeting in June. It's all about family from out of town, people who are close, who just happen not to be residents, getting here later in the evening so they're not coming all day to the beach. Um, scale is important. Keep the number low. Five. And I, I, well, I'm not trying to open Pandora's box and make this an enormous thing. And it's all after hours. This is 6 o'clock or later, but that is, is what the guests will be providing mm -hmm. for. Did any of the ideas that we've kind of been bouncing around seem like a good solution? The reduced rate and parking passes handed out is a good one around how to pass them out. I'm with 
the gentleman over here who suggested the papers from the office, unless the IP solution is as simple as you're saying it is. Yeah. If it, if it plugs in that easy, yeah, I'm on board with that. But, yeah. I think you can do it like the app, like you're yeah. saying, and, and just make it simple that way. I mean, yeah. you're right, 2024, yeah. it's all about scanning yeah. and technology. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like that could be an easier way. I mean, everybody has a phone of yeah. some kind or a right. device. Get in line for your bonfire. <laughs>
maybe we should just buy a house for commission use and we'll just put it into the trash and use the parking <laughs> rent. We'll let people park there. You think? And then just, just to parking. qualify something, um, just looking at some notes here. So Town Hall and Sherman, it's permit parking only. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everything south of Post Road is permit parking with the exception of Reef Road and Veterans Park. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That's pretty far. Okay. Reef Road, Veterans Park. For Jenny. That's a hike. Yeah, it's a long way. Yeah. All right. We need more parking. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ever going to do this park, change parking down in Hayden? Like, you know, change the parking at Aiden. Uh, off the top of my head, there might have been like a few spots added in on like um, Old Dam, but I don't think I'm thinking of a master plan right now. Like there weren't like park, you know, there might have been some angled parking along along Sullivan, but not substantially. Yeah. I'd have to double check that concept. Yeah, those you know, three spots right in front of the building. Ball and you have spots. Football, it's like. Oh, it's a zoo. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's a wrap.